Morning, beloved. We are in the best place at the moment, and that's in the presence of the Lord. I don't think anybody would want to be anywhere else but in the presence of the Lord. I want to make, not an apology, but I want to uh, bring unto your attention that my wife isn't here with me, so I'm a bit lopsided. Um, she, my daughter's going back to Cape Town. Uh, uh, she's going to resume her studies and so on, so um, she wanted her mom to stay at home and make lunch and yeah, probably, uh, get her stuff together. So, yeah, so Miranda's now visited this morning, sorting Cheryl out. I want to thank Pam for typing out this beautiful, the, the message itself here, yeah, and um, for the lovely uh, hymns you chose. And then also, um, I've got a different pair of glasses this morning. Um, my, I've, my grandchild is at, uh, at home at the moment, and uh, she somehow got a hold of my, I was busy uh, uh, reading the Bible, and then I left to go to the kitchen, and, Jenna, waar kom die kinders vandaan, mense? When I came into the, and she had got hold of my, my glasses, and she managed to get the, the one arm out, it's not, irreparable, it can be repaired, so I've got to have my glasses sorted out. And uh, so her mother, uh, 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 my granddaughter's uh, mother said, uh, Dad, here's a pair of glasses. And I looked at her and said, okay, look, I need glasses to see, be able to see the words properly and so on. And uh, here I am with a pair of different glasses on this morning. The message God has laid upon my heart is called, it's the meaning of a risen life. You know, last week we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And wherever you walked, you heard people saying, He's risen. If you open, if you looked at, if you looked at, your, if you watched your, 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 your Facebook and you read, you'll see a lot of people posted that Jesus is risen. But when it comes to us as Christians, we also need to live that resurrected life. And this is the reason for the, the title, The Meaning of a Risen Life. You know, it is so beautiful to know that when we, when we accept the Lord as our personal Savior, we repent and we are baptized, we are then identifying ourselves. This is what baptism means. Baptism is, means Identify, identifying ourselves with Jesus' death. The reason for this is that being baptized, we are committing ourselves to turning from completely from our old life, so much so that our old life will be, will be dead and our sinful nature will, be, will no longer have expression through our physical bodies. That's to be found in Romans 6 verse Three, so, sorry, Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 6. And this is so amazing that when we live the risen life, beloved, the risen life is, 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 is just giving over to the Lord and allowing our, the Lord to take over in our lives. When we repent, when we come to know the Lord as our personal Savior, then the Bible says repent and be baptized. I want to repeat it. The Bible says repent and be baptized. The Bible doesn't say repent and be confirmed. <laughs> and I want us to be very careful about this. Last week I, I spent some time with my in-laws and uh, they had this, what they couldn't, and this is a big thing amongst people. This is a big thing. I was also confirmed in the middle of church many years. And I felt that there was nothing wrong with that. But you know, you shall know the truth, beloved. I know sometimes this doesn't sit very well with people. But it's not my word, it's the word of the Lord. Amen. It's God's word. Not Patrick Peter Adams' word, it's God's word. And we need to face facts in these days. We need to live a life of truth. Last week I spent some time with my in-laws because it was uh, um, the, one, the one boy's confirmation party. Now I'm not a, I'm, I've never been a critical, per, uh, when I say critical, I've never been a, 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 the type of person that wants to judge people. 
That's not my work. We have one judge, and that is Jesus, Jesus Christ. We can reprimand each other in love, yes. But we don't not need to judge people. But you know, it is so sad to think that, uh, that there, are, uh, there are situations taking place in churches where people want to deviate from the truth. And I need to repeat this. The Bible says repent and be baptized. And baptism is our, us identifying ourselves, once we come to know the Lord as personal Savior, identifying ourselves with Jesus Christ. We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death in order that, listen to this, in order that, that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. That's the story of the risen life. We identify ourselves with Jesus Christ. When you're baptized, uh, 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 you, 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 you're in the pool, you're in the water, and you're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You go under and you come up. You come up in the newness of life. You're doing that which, is, which God wants you to do. Identifying with Jesus Christ. We must bear the identity of the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the evidence concerning the resurrection is the empty tomb. And there is no other explanation for the empty tomb than a resurrection. The Romans, the, Jew, the Jews never stole his body. The Romans didn't steal his body. The apostles didn't steal his body. The woman didn't steal his body. His enemies had no reason to steal his body and, and fabricate a lie. His friends didn't even believe in a resurrection and then go out and die as martyrs for a phony. The angels gave their own explanation. He's not here because he's risen. Wonderful. Wonderful. The truth of the resurrection gives life to every other area of the gospel. Of the gospel truth. The resurrection is the pivot which all Christianity turns because of the resurrection. We have received a new inward power. Because of the resurrection, you know, the, the, the whole of Christianity turns around the resurrection, the, ri the, the, the rising up of Jesus Christ out of the grave. And this is so important for us as Christians to realize that, to accept that, and to live that life. The Bible says be separate from the world, not desperate, separate. <laughs> Some people can be very desperate. They run here, they run there, they do this, they do that. They, oh, you know, from Sun, from Monday to, to Saturday, they are saints. And Sundays, they suddenly become saints. Sorry, let me repeat that. From Monday to Saturday, they are sinners. But Sunday, come Sunday, they are saints. On their way to church with a hangover, hangover. <laughs> and this is so sad people I can't for the life of me understand Neville how people can miss they have Bible colleges and they have all these uh, 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 places of learning where you can learn the Bible and still they live a lie I can't understand it and I'm not being judgmental I want you to sit here my beloved and understand that you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. How can you ignore, repent, and be baptized? How can you do something else besides what the, what the Lord wants, and what the truth wants, what the, the gospel tells us to do? So, so when we live a risen life, we have a new inward power. 
Romans 8 verse 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by spirit <coughs> that dwelleth in you. Beloved, we are powerful people, man. Besides being special. We are powerful because the same spirit and the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from dead dwells in us. I wanted to sink in a bit, just a, a moment of silence. The same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in us. You know, beloved, <coughs> sorry, I've got a bit of a cough. When we accept the Lord as our personal Savior, we repent, we baptized, we come out of the water in a newness of life, and the power of God rests upon us. Nothing, you know, a lot of people do a lot of things to change their ways. They go to psychologists, psychiatrists, they, they go on holiday for, for, for three months just to get peace of mind. And all these things that they do, Jackie, just to get some semblance of normality, if I may use that term. Because as life is a rush. But you know, when we accept the Lord as our personal Savior and we are obedient to Him, one of the things that He gives us, beside the myriad of things He gives us, He gives us peace. Peace, everlasting, perfect peace. We don't fall to pieces. We have the peace of God in, the, in our lives. I like a scripture. If a, if a man's ways pleases God, you make him and his enemy, enemies to be at peace with him. Is your enemy at peace with you? Who does that neighbor who passed with you? Huh? I can't stand that person. You know, the neighbors, the neighbors is, is, is a sort of a, uh, a thermometer to test how your Christianity is. Neighbor looks worth and die for him. He says she's a Christian. She says she's a Christian, but oh! You must see this and you must see that. And you must hear this and you must hear that. Beloved, God gives us an inner power to overcome Satan and his fault. <coughs> Sorry, we can, we can pray for people. We can love people. We can lay hands on people. Amen. You know, I don't know why the church of God doesn't lay hands on people anymore. That is scriptural. We lay hands on people. We pray for those that are sick. We pray, we pray for those that are mourning. I mean, I must see people, somebody raised from the dead. Because Jesus did it. And the same power lives in, is in, within, within us. Beloved, let us take hold of that promise that the same power that lives in Jesus at the grave dwells in us. We can, we can pray. We can do the, the Bible says, it doesn't Jesus say in his word, greater things will you do in my name. Greater things will you do in my name. Beloved, sorry, we've got Jesus in our life. The one who redeemed us from our sin. The one who, who gave his life for us. The one who arose on the third day for us, dwells in us. The second thing, very quickly, is when we live the risen life, there is a Christ-likeness in us. We must be like Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be more manifest in our lives. There's a scripture. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made manifested in our bodies. Christ-likeness. 
is a person who has has quality uh, uh, Christ likeness is a person who has the qualities of Jesus Christ. An example of Christ likeness is a kind, forgiving, sincere, caring, and a humble and accepting person. That's the qualities of being Christ like. Kind, you know, being kind to one another, forgiving one another. Sincere in what we do, caring and humble. That's Christ's likeness. If you're not kind, then what kind of person are you? If you're not prepared to forgive, you want to say that you are forgiven, Jesus has forgiven you. How can I, how can I not forgive the next person or my or my enemy or somebody that has done something to hurt you? Sincere. To be sincere about what you do. Caring and humble. Humility is such a such a big such a small and simple word, but it has such a big meaning to be humble. God resists the proud, but He gives us grace to the humble. And the question today is: how humble are we? Or are we proud? Does what we have make us proud? Or does what we, where we live, or, you know, these are, are funny things that make people proud. Or make them full of pride. Funny things, things that I sometimes can't understand. But Jesus humbled himself so much, so, so, that he died on the cross for our sins. I think that is the, the that is the biggest humility you can get is for you to go and put your life down for somebody and Jesus did that for us. So Christ likeness is um, is part of the risen life. The third very quickly is devotion to a new master. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15 says and that he died for all that they which that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them all and rose again. And you must listen to these scriptures. Write it down if you want to. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. It's about a devotion to a new master. To be a devo to be devout means to be deeply dedicated to a belief or a cause. Many people obs are obsessed with or devout or are devout fellows of sports teams, political figures, and envir environmental issue cases, causes, or lifestyles, or beliefs that the Bible teaches that we should be devout followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Bible teaches us that we must be devout followers of Jesus Christ. How many people don't we revere? I mean, I am. A, uh, I used to play soccer, and uh, I was a fairly good soccer player, and. I, the T, I'm still a fan of Manchester United, blah, blah, blah. But I used to follow everything that Manchester United does. They, who, who they buy as players, etc. Then we have political figures. How many people don't revere political figures? Cyril Ramaphosa, please not Julius Malema. You know, but they, they, they revere all these political figures. No, he's good. No, he's good. No, this is the one who should lead the country, blah, blah, blah. So we have our, our, our favorites. Uh, in the political field. <laughs> and then we have here in in very I can't get the word. Environmentalists, people who are into causes, you know, trees and uh, animals, and which is good. It's good, there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, people are devout followers of these various. Uh, 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 organizations and people and sports and all that type of thing. But you know, Jesus says, when Jesus comes into your life, we, we should be devout followers, followers of Jesus Christ. That is important. That is what makes us uh, 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 thick as Christians. We follow Jesus Christ all the way. No stopping us, no hindrances, nothing. We're following Jesus. We are devout 
followers of Jesus. Are you a devout follower of Jesus? So it's so easy to, to deviate, it's so easy to go off uh, the road and so easy to do this and so easy to do that. The Bible says no man can serve two masters as we spoke about it so many times. We, we follow the one we love. We are devout followers of Jesus Christ. We can't want to follow Jesus Christ and still want to serve the devil. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. You've got to serve the one you love. You know, when I, when I uh, uh, fell in love with my wife, uh, uh, um, I, would, I, was, I was like a devout fellow. I wanted to be where she was. And I'm sure most of you had this experience in your own life. That you wanted, to, you know, you, you, were, you, were, you were honest with each other, you were sincere with each other. There was no hindrances. That is my wife, or that is my, the one I love. The same applies to Jesus. We don't want to love too many people. Uh, when I say too many, too many gods, like people do. We love Jesus, and we follow him. Completely, honestly, sincerely, in a humble manner. I want to follow Jesus, and I'm going to follow him till he comes and fetch me again. Then we have the fourth, very quickly. The Bible says, and I want to read this because Pam wrote it out so nicely for me. We have heavenly ambitions. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. If, you, if then you have been risen, raised with Christ, seated. We've been raised with Christ, beloved. We serve Him now. And we will seek things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Don't be too, you know, we must balance it out so nicely. Don't be so heavenly minded that you know earthly good. You know, We've, got to, we've really got to understand that our minds and our affections is it's above. But we need to make other people also aware of what it is to serve the Lord. Heavenly affections. The Greek word, I, did, I, went, to, I went to do a bit of studying. The Greek word for ambition is philotum. Philotum. It means literally, it's an it's an honor to be to it's an honor to be to be ambitious when it comes to good things or godly things. When you put that way, a Greek word called philotum. I read, I, I googled that and I saw that. So, beloved, when we when we become Christians, one of the signs of a risen life is that our minds is set on above. And, you know, you've heard the saying, uh, people walk with heads, in a, with heads in a cloud. It's not that. It's not that we us walking with heads in a cloud. It is that your minds and your affection is set on things that are above. Where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Beloved, are you heavenly minded? Have you got a heavenly affection? Have you got ambition, heavenly ambitions? It's so important. So important that if you have been raised with Christ, Jenny, then you live the way Christ wants you to live. Your mind is up there. You're thinking about, about what God should be paid for you, how is we, what is be paid for you, who are you going to meet there one day, all the saints, all those who have gone before. That is what our minds are stayed upon. And God encourages us to go on theme. So easy to give up these days. So easy. But let us keep on keeping on to Jesus. Then lastly, an exaltation to heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 to 6. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There is a scripture. Beloved, this is what makes, 
the, what the risen life means. Inward power, Christ-likeness, devotion to a new master. And that is very important. I just want to hold on the devotion to, to a new master. You know, my, my daughter asked me a question very quickly. And it blew me away. She says, she, she looks at me, she says, she says to me, Josh, Dad, was Jesus white? <laughs> I looked at her and said, oh my word. Was Jesus white? Then, I, then my mind went back, you know, to the apartheid area. When you went into people's houses and you saw this photos, Ruth, of Jesus Christ with blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember his photos, Fred? Huh? And, 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 well, you didn't get much of that photos in, in, amongst ANC members, but I remember going to ver various people's homes in US and you saw this picture of Jesus Christ with blonde hair and blue eyes. Beloved geographically, and, and, and if you know where Jesus grew up and where he did his ministry, uh, uh, I think he, and I'm not going to put that out there and say he was black or blue or whatever. But Jesus, I said to my daughter, was right. Whether he was white, I don't know. But he was right. <laughs> she looked at me and said, yes. He came to give us life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. He came and he changed our lives. This is why mom and dad served the Lord. She looked at me, still wanting to find it where he was, I know, you know what the issue with white is. It's got nothing to do with white, Sherelle. It's got to do with Jesus making our lives right. And that is important, beloved. That is so important. We don't want to be two-faced. We don't know, you know, uh, 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 when, 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 when we were, uh, I've said this so many times, when we were certain people, we want to do certain things, and when we were Christians, we want to do Christian things. When we are Christians, and when we are risen with Christ, we sit in heavenly places with Him. He sits on the right hand of God the Father, our lawyer, interceding for us. And we're there with Him. And one day we're going to share eternity with Jesus Christ. He arose from the dead to give us life and life more abundant. That we can also live risen lives. Don't to walk the streets dejected or with long faces or, you know, like as if Jesus is not alive. Jesus has come to give us life, and I repeat it again, and life more abundantly. Are you enjoying the abundant life, beloved? Are you living the risen life? Are you living the power of the Lord? Are you got that Christ likeness? Huh? Don't let people look at you and think, oh my word, is that just a Christian and I'm saved. You know that type of thing, it happens, people say that, they talk that way. Christ likeness, are you devoted to our new master. Jesus Christ is our master. We were mastered by so many things. You name it, alcohol, drugs, you name it. Those things mastered our lives. Broke up our homes, broke up our relationships, whatever. Let us, it, it, it made us lose our jobs and so on. But once we became Christians and we accepted the Lord, our first and say you, Wendy, hallelujah, we devoted to a new master. And he guides us and he leads us. Then we have heavenly affections and heavenly ambitions. We're thinking about Jesus. We're thinking of when he's coming again. We want to be with him. We want to share. We want to meet up with loved ones that has gone on before. And then we are exalted to heavenly places. That is a risen life. Don't walk around, shoulders bent and, you know. How's it going, brother? Oh, bro. Are you fine, brother? Oh, brother. The devil is really attacking my life. You know? God has given us a way out. God has given us a power to say, Get the end, Satan. Don't say, Get the end, Satan. <laughs> Tell him in Jesus' name, Get the end, Satan. I bind your works. I bind you in the name of Jesus. That's the power we've got. And don't uh, uh, think that the devil's got all the power and the right. He's, he's a defeated foe. 
He's defeated. He's just carrying on now till Jesus comes. And who knows, and we know that the coming of the Lord is so nearby. Are you ready? Are you waiting for him? With expectancy? Or are you saying, well, it will never happen? Look around the back, look at the world today, beloved. It's, they are going on as if there's no tomorrow. But we know as Christians, God has given us a power to live a successful, victorious Christian life. And we can be part of that. We are part of that the moment we repent and we give our lives to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Beloved, we're going to sing our last hymn. Is it on the... Yeah, okay. I've got a bit of a cold, but I thank God for the strength he gives. Beloved, let us stand and sing a beautiful hymn. It is well with my soul. And if it isn't well with your soul, beloved, don't sing a lie. Rather keep quiet. But if it is well with your soul, sing it out aloud. If not, we've got men and women here that is willing to pray with you and to make that important issue right with God. Okay? Okay.